I'd like to sort out a few problems with my colour mixing application now. It's already working, but it's not at all robust, and it's not particularly user-friendly. I have to click on a button to display the three circles. If I want to change one of these colours, I need to type the value in. Also, if I type a value that's too big, for example, I can crash the programme. I want to deal with all of these problems. And you may have come across another problem with this. Watch what happens when I resize the form. And then resize it back again. I have literally wiped out those three circles. When I click the button, the form is repainted. I get them back again. But what I really want to happen is to repaint the form every time I resize it. So let's see how to deal with this issue first. Before I go any further, I'm going to get rid of some of this commented code, which I used in previous demonstrations. I don't need it anymore. I just want to give myself a little bit more space to work with. So what I want to do is trigger this code in a slightly different way. I'm going to use the forms paint event. I can create a procedure stub for that like this. And I'm literally going to cut and paste my code into here. Same code, just in a different place. And now the button doesn't do anything at all. Let's try it out. Well, I didn't have to press the button to get the circles on the form in the first place. And let's see what happens if I resize it. When I resize the form, it's being repainted, so the circles are being produced again. Change one of these values, and it's repainted the form at that point. It's a little bit flickery as well. It doesn't look particularly good. But it's a step in the right direction. Let's see if we can improve on this. I want you to notice that I'm creating a graphics object each time the form is repainted. This is not particularly efficient. Every time a new graphics object is created, it's taking up some more memory. The .NET garbage collector will eventually get around to cleaning up the objects that aren't being used. But there is actually a better way to achieve this. The paint event comes with its own graphics object. It's passed into the paint event as a parameter. It's part of this parameter here. Let me show you how to use this graphics object. I'll get rid of these two lines of code. And instead of referring to G, I'm going to refer to E dot graphics. That is the graphics object which is passed automatically to the form's paint event. This is actually a standard way of painting things onto the form. So now let's just copy that through the program. And we'll give it another test. Looks OK. I've got rid of that awful flickering as well now. If I resize the form, I'm not wiping anything out. But I do have another problem. If I change one of these values, I need to somehow call the paint event. It's not happening automatically. I'll use the button to do this for now, but I'll show you a better way in a moment when I put some new input controls on the form. To call the paint event, this is the command I need to use. me.invalidate. Me is the form, and invalidate says this form is no longer valid. What's on that form needs repainting. Do it now, please. Let's try it out. That's better. So one problem has gone away. But this problem hasn't. My program is still accepting invalid input. Let's deal with that by replacing the input controls. There are a number of ways you can do this. I'm going to use horizontal scroll bars. But to demonstrate the alternatives, I've added a second form to my application here, and I've put some other things on it. 
I'll make this the startup form for my project just to show you how they work. So this is a horizontal scroll bar. This is the one I'm going to use. VB.net also comes with a vertical scroll bar, if you'd rather use that. Notice I've set it up so the values go from 0 to 255. I've also got a text box next to it, which is being updated automatically when I change the value of the scroll bar. And I could lock that text box to stop the user typing into it. Here's another way to achieve the same effect. This is called a track bar. It works in exactly the same way as a horizontal scroll bar, but you might just prefer the look of it. And then finally, we've got this gadget here, which is called a number picker. I've seen it called a spinner control on other versions of VB. You can see I've got two little buttons there, and I just hold them down, and the value is changing. Let's put some horizontal scroll bars onto our colour picker. I'm going to need some more space at the bottom of the form, so I'll need to make it bigger so I can fit everything onto it. And for convenience, I'm going to put my horizontal scroll bars into a panel. Now this is just a container, a convenient way of grouping things together. And if I move the panel, then I can move all the objects inside it at the same time. Here's the horizontal scroll bar, or the H scroll bar. Let's pop one on. And there's a few properties I need to set for this gadget before I can use it. If we take a look in the properties window, you can see it's got a maximum value of 100. I need to change that to 255. The minimum is currently zero. I'm happy with that. There's a small change value, which is currently one and there's a large change value, which is currently 10. I need both of these to be 1. There's more than one way the user can change the value of the scroll bar. One is to click on this chevron here, which will affect the small change. Another is to click on either side of this drag handle, which will affect the large change. It's important that the large change is 1, otherwise some of the higher values may become unselectable. You can experiment with this once you've got it working, if you want to see what I mean. I'm going to use the label that I've already created, I might as well, so I'll pull that into the panel, and I'll use the text box I've already got as well. So that can come into the panel, so this is going to be my red scroll bar. Now, as I said, if I move the panel, anything contained within it will move as well. If you wish, you could change the appearance of the panel itself, maybe put a border on it. That's up to you. I'm just using it as a container. Let's get two more scroll bars on there. It's looking a little bit messy at the moment, but the form designer gives me a few tools I can use to tidy this up. I'm going to select the three scroll bars Format, make same size, and I want them to be the same height. And again, format, make same size, and I want them to be the same width. Line them up, and make the vertical spacing equal. I can spend some more time with this later. Let's not forget to set the properties of all of these scroll bars. Large change 1, maximum value 255. Let's see how it looks for now. Not too bad. Maybe they're a little bit wide, and maybe they can be a little bit higher up. They don't, of course, do anything yet, because I haven't written any code to control them. You could, of course, spend a long time getting it looking just right. I'm going to move on to the code now. The first thing I want to do is set the initial value 
of each of these scroll bars to be 255. I'll do that on the form load event. The next thing I want to do is to associate the value of each scroll bar with the value of the text box next to it. I'm going to do this using the scroll event of each scroll bar. So this little procedure handles H scroll bar 1's scroll event. Let's see what we've got. The scroll bars are starting at their maximum value, and as I scroll back and forth, the value is changing from 0 to 255. Fantastic. And I can change the value of the scroll bar like this as well. When I click on this little chevron, it changes by 1. That's the large change property which I modified. It's important that you do that because if you're at the highest value or near it, and then you press the chevron, we don't want to add another 10. That will crash the program. The user can still type into the text boxes, and I can either code some validation on the change event of each text box, just a little if block to make sure that the value is in range, or I could disable text entry into that text box using one of the properties in the properties window. For now though, my scroll bars are working, I still have to click on the button to call the form's invalidate event. But I can do that when we change the value in the scroll bar. I don't need the button anymore. Very, very flickery not comfortable to look at. Every time that paint event is being called, you can see it's repainting the circles, but there is nothing smooth about this at all. It's an easy fix. Let me show you how. Me dot double buffered equals true. As simple as that. Much, much smoother. Much easier to look at. Let's just deal with the text box validation issue quickly. You can see this text box has an enabled property. I've set that to false now. I can't click into it. I can't change the text. I can only change it using the scroll bar. That's the easiest way to fix the problem. So there is my almost finished colour mixing application. All I need to do now is display the value of each colour in binary and in hexadecimal. And I'd also like some labels on the circles so I can see the hexadecimal colour code for each circle and each intersection. I'll finish it off in the next video.